This is the Synology DS923 Plus NAS, and it has some seriously cool features. And if you're brand new to this type of technology, NAS or NAS actually stands for Network Attached Storage, which basically means that this box right here is a dedicated computer that has four hard drive bays, and this allows me to store all my project files and data in one secure location, rather than using external hard drives or on the cloud with Google. And I do want to take a second to shout out Synology. This is not a sponsored video, but they were kind enough to send over the NAS and hard drives for me to review today. So my workflow up until now has not been very efficient as a video creator, and that's because I was using external hard drive, mainly because of the price. SSD drives cost significantly more. But the thing is, as I was making larger and larger 4K project files, you guys already know hard drives are just not fast enough. So then I upgraded to external SSD drives, which was fine until I then hired two employees to help with the edit and graphic design aspect. So then we started using the Google Drive, which was great because my employees could remotely access the files, as could I. But the problem was, even though it started off really convenient and affordable, over time, as we needed more and more storage, it's not as expandable financially because it became really an expensive bill per month. So then we started doing what I never recommend to do, and that is deleting our old project files. And that just turned out to be a big headache for me. So this is gonna be a really nice change of pace. Now, if you're a complete beginner and you are considering getting a NAS, I did include a little setup process in this video. You may wanna watch that just so you can figure out what you can expect if you wanna make this type of upgrade in your office. First and foremost, let's go ahead and get our brand new NAS unboxed. Right away, we find a power cable followed by two CAT6E ethernet cables. These will come in handy later. Of course, we do have our power transformer as well. And then we do have a pair of keys, which I'll touch on more later, and a package of screws. Unboxing even further, we're gonna find our actual Synology NAS system. This thing is looking really clean and nice. I'm excited to get it set up on my desk. And flipping it over to the back, you're gonna find two very large cooling fans, two ethernet ports. Of course, you do have an eSATA port. You are gonna find a USB type A port, and of course, a port for power. Now, flipping this unit upside down, this is where things get really interesting because you're gonna find two removable doors. Upon closer inspection, we find that we can actually install two NVMe SSD drives. The installation for this is really quick and simple. You can simply slide the SSD into the pins and then secure it down with the included screw. If you're unfamiliar with this type of SSD, you may have seen one before if you own a gaming PC, just like this MSI one terabyte I have here in my PC. Now, after we close up those doors on the back, we can finally take a look at the front of this unit where we find four removable RAID slots for hard drives, another USB port, and of course, this LED cluster that gives us different status reports for each disk drive. Oh yeah, and you can't forget about that handy power button. This unit is looking super nice, and here's a little overview of everything we've unpackaged so far. Now, also included in the box, Synology gave me an E10G22T1 mini network upgrade slot, which in much simpler terms, basically just means a 10 gig ethernet port that we're going to slot into the back of our NAS. Now onto the star of our show, the hard drives. For this particular installation, I have chosen four eight terabyte Synology Plus hard drives, which after doing some basic math and calculations, I figured this should last me a bare minimum of 18 months for my current workflow. After that, it will be time to swap them out for new ones or even maybe upgrade them to some bigger ones. I don't know, we'll figure that out when we get there. Now that we got everything unboxed, it's time to get all of our hardware put together so we can get this NAS set up. And I have to say right out the gate, I was extremely impressed with the ease and simplicity of this entire process. Synology obviously keeps a close attention to detail and really cares about the user end experience of their product. Remember those screws from earlier? Well, you don't need them if you don't want because you can actually just utilize the screw clips that came pre-installed in the hard drive terminals. This made installation process so much more efficient and smooth. Not that a few screws would have made it extremely difficult or anything, but I'm always a happy customer when companies give us options. Now it's time to install that 10 gig port that we unboxed earlier. To do so, all you have to do is remove two screws on this back plate and then simply slide the brand new ethernet port right in and then replace the two screws. I think we're starting to see a trend with this setup process because this was super quick and easy as well. And after we finish that installation, obviously we are going to have three different LAN ports, but of course I will be using the 10 gig port. One weird thing I was scratching my head about is the fact that the NAS system came with two Cat5 ethernet cables. I think it would have been nice if they included two Cat6 cables instead, but luckily I already have plenty of Cat6 cables handy as a backup. Okay, so you guys are gonna wanna remember that this NAS system will be running 24 seven and we wanna protect it against power outages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it into a backup UPS. This way, no brown outages or anything else are going to interrupt my ability to access my NAS storage. And then as far as the networking goes, I do have the Orbi 960 mesh system. And the good thing is there's a 2.5 gigahertz port on the back so we can make sure we're getting the fastest 
fastest speeds possible. Oh yeah, one last thing. Remember those keys from earlier? Well, they're actually used to lock down each hard drive bay. This way you don't accidentally yank one out when you're working on your desk. Or more importantly, if you have kids, you can go to bed at night knowing they're not gonna be able to remove your hard drives either. All right, and now it's time to set up the software portion, which again is gonna be pretty quick and simple. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to findsynology.com. This way we can locate our new NAS system on our network. Remember that your PC will need to be connected to the same network as your NAS for the initial setup process. Now in my case, it did take a minute, but the NAS did eventually pop up with all the serial numbers and information. I blurred mine out for obvious reasons, but after confirming all your info, go ahead and hit connect. Scroll down through the privacy statement and then hit continue. After that, you're ready to install. I chose to automatically download the latest version of my disk station manager and simply hit next. It's fine that all data is deleted because nothing is currently on these hard drives, so I just hit continue. You will now wait until this number reaches 100. After that, your DS923 Plus will go through a countdown cycle and restart process. Now that you've completed that, go ahead and hit start on the welcome page. From here, you will want to name your device and create an admin account and password. The prompt will give you options for future updates, so read these and choose the one that's right for you. And then of course, I chose to create a Synology account. This way I could take advantage of all the features available. And a pop-up is going to appear on the left side of your screen. This is where you can create an account and fill out all your details. And guys, I think this goes without saying, but remember to use a unique password. This way you can keep all your data as secure as possible. After you've completed all of this, you'll want to set up the Quick Connect ID so that you will have remote access to all of your files. And be sure you write down or save this ID for future reference and then go ahead and hit submit. Next up, you're gonna wanna download three different apps. The first one is DS Finder. This one's gonna allow you to see the overall system health and information about how much storage is left on all the hard drives. I thought it was really neat that this app actually featured a step-by-step -step setup process via the app, just in case you're struggling with the NAS setup. App number two is the Synology Secure Sign-In. This is an authenticator app. This way you can set up 2FA for your NAS. And for app number three, you're gonna download Drive. This is how you're gonna access and play back different media files like pictures or video. So at this point, I've been using my Synology NAS for about a month now. And ever since I switched over from Google Drive to the NAS, I would say my overall experience has been really positive. Now, of course, the most important part is I needed to be able to quickly and easily store and manage my large project files. But what I'm most excited to report is the Synology software was so user-friendly, including their Drive app, that there really wasn't a learning curve at all when I switched from Google Drive over to Synology. We were able to pretty much just pick up right where we left off, which was a really great bonus. And speaking of the Drive app, I know one feature I've used the most is the ability to upload video files and screenshots from my phone directly to the Drive app, and then I can remotely access them later on my PC when I'm ready to edit. If I had to pick my least favorite part about upgrading to the Synology NAS, it's probably just the startup cost to get everything going. For the setup like I have, it's gonna run you between $1,200 and $1,500. And even though I was paying a really high monthly bill with Google Drive and that was gonna catch up to that $1,500 very quickly, it's still an upfront investment. And secondary to that is probably just the setup process. It's not too difficult if you're tech savvy, but I can see a couple beginners having some issues and having to phone a friend to get it set up. Other than that, really user-friendly and an awesome experience overall. And the verdict is, I gotta say, even though I was really complacent where we were with the Google Drive, even though I felt that I was overpaying for storage, I'm really happy I finally jumped and made the switch. I was a little nervous to do it. Cause anytime you're gonna disrupt the workflow for your team, it's something you gotta think about. But I gotta say, after this was set up, which was a pretty quick setup, it really ran well for us. So I'm really happy we did make the switch. Oh yeah, and before I end the video, I'm actually making a upcoming video where I rate my subscribers gaming setup. So if you're a gamer, whether you have a PC, a console, a handheld, a cell phone, I don't care. I wanna see the good, the bad, the ugly. Go ahead and join up on my Box Squad Discord. I will leave the link in the description. Send over your best picture or video clip of your gaming setup and I just might feature you in my video, give you a shout out and rate it.